Hello, people. Listen, I just threw this together at the last minute. So don't know what kind of action I'm going to get, but I just came on for a few reasons. I don't even know how long I'm going to be on today. But, okay, let me see. So I, I can see I took a lot of people by surprise by throwing this on because a lot of my regulars aren't here. So we'll just move a little bit slow and see what happens. Jane Perry, how you doing? Appreciate you being here. Discount beatings, how you doing? Irish mob, it's good to see you here. Uh, everything's going good with my family, and I'm going to talk about that in a, in a couple minutes. James Proctor, I appreciate it. You're a very uh, good guy, always helping me out. And James has been helping me some videos lately, which I really appreciate because he has a lot of knowledge and he does really good research. Yuming Bean, duty with my face on it. Dude, you can hang out here even with my face on here. But, you know, be cool. Mike Wall, how you doing? Westies, how you doing? Chai Hooker, how you doing? Butterfly Girl, how are you doing? Victoria Young. Gianni, it's good to see you here, Gianni. Gravesend, it's good to see you here. And uh, this isn't like I'm going to be doing a very special show tonight. I just want to, first of all, I want to talk about, a lot of people have been very kind to me for the last two days. And I want to talk about that, but we'll get to we'll get to it in a little bit. Steve Marinello, I I almost forgot how to do lives. It's been like what ten days maybe since I've done a live. If you guys can hear me okay, just let make sure I can you can hear me okay. If you have any issues, let me know. Okay, let's see here. Oh, if you guys want to donate money to me, feel free. I'm not going to get mad at you. I'm not going to stop you. Uh, it's at the, it's in, it's at the top of the uh, page. If you want to cash up or anything, if you don't, that's fine with me also. And I want to talk about one thing, guys, when I put up my, my video, I, you guys notice I've been doing a lot of videos lately, real videos. And, uh, unfortunately there's commercials in them, but that's how I make a lot of my money on commercials. So do me a favor, if you can't donate, if you watch my videos and you see the commercials in them, do me a favor, just play them a little bit longer. It helps me out and uh, I don't have to come on here and beg for money. I really don't like coming on here begging for money. So uh, let's see who else is here. Big Boy Blue. Okay, see that? Look, look, so Human Bean. Where's Danny, dude? You know, people, don't you like when we get these people in here? You know, that's it. He just has to come in. So we'll, if he says one more dick thing, block him totally, okay? That's your last warning, human. I know you don't care. A problem, the odds are you're probably JC, which means that you're not too smart. Hello there. God bless, brother. I appreciate it, uh, Italian Stallion. Joff Brothen, I have not seen this name before. Hey, Lee, how you doing, my man? Have I missed your name before? <laughs> have you been in here before? Not that it matters. I appreciate you uh, coming in. Trust gets you killed. Being real gets you hated. Okay, I like that. Butterfly girl, hit the like button. Yes, please hit the like button. That's very important to hit the like button. Freak, big dog. What the hell? Assassinino. Assassinino, why haven't you uh, slowed down on videos? We look forward to your videos. I think that you should kind of pick up on them a little bit. Okay. Tony Soflo in Florida says, if you're not with him, you're against him, baby, baby. Okay. And what's your point? This guy has nothing intelligent to say. Block him next time he comes up and says something stupid. If you want to talk about Tony uh, SoFlo, go to the Tony SoFlo show.
Lori Love. How you doing, Lori? All is good, thank you. Damn it, Mandy, welcome. And Angel Gotti. I have not talked to this woman in hours. Um, but any Angel, thank you once again, like always. Okay, people, I want to talk. First of all, um, as you know, a couple days ago, my mother passed. And her funeral is going to be Wednesday in um, New York. And it's going to be in Port Washington, Nassau Knowles. If anybody is interested from New York that wants to go, email me at leecole 1010 and I will let you know exactly where to go. Because a few people have already asked me and are going. Uh, people that are from on here. So, uh, you know, I really appreciate that. And you'll get to meet some people in my family. Hmm. And I'm not worried about people meeting. See, my family's kind of crazy. If you go there and you act stupid... It ain't going to matter. But if you want to go there, you can go there. Um, there's been a lot of nice things said to me about my mother when she passed. My mother and I, we've had a lot of conflict over the years. But the fact of the matter is she's still my mother. And I'm sure people in here have issues with their parents, mothers, brothers, children in their lifetime. It's still sad when people pass away. Um my mother lived a long life. She lived to be 87 years old. How the hell she lived that long is beyond me. She broke every rule in the book. Every rule in the book she broke. She drank most of her life. I'm talking about she was a severe alcoholic. And uh, when she's no reason why she lived as long as she did. But my aunts, all, they lived into the, into the mid-90s. Her sisters, they just have that bloodline uh, where they live a long time. Uh, that's not a whistling. That is the wind outside, people, blowing. That is not my mic. The wind outside, today it's blowing 40 to 60 miles an hour. I live in the panhandle. And the panhandle ain't no joke when it comes to wind. As anybody from this area that's been in the area of the panhandle knows. Baylor, no, no sound. Can you guys hear me? Let me know. Can you hear me okay, Sean? Can you hear me okay, Osino? Asinino? Sean, it's good to see you here. Okay, you hear me. Okay, so whoever can't hear me, there's something wrong with your mic or your headset or whatever. Hey, listen, I'll be dropping. Uh, I'll be dropping the link for people to jump up here. Uh, is my light? No, it's not off. It's on. Okay, so hey, buddy, much respect. Rest in peace, Mrs. Cole. Tony, I appreciate that. And uh, I really enjoyed uh, when you came on the other day and we had that great boxing conversation. That was fun. Finn Freak, how you doing? Good to see you here. And like always, Sean, it's always good to see you here. Okay. Yeah, like I was saying, we may have conflict with our parents in life. We might have conflict with people. But when they pass away, it's a sad thing. And... Um, you know, it's just sad because, you know, a lot of times you see people suffer and when they're dying at the end of their life, you have to, you know, they lay in a bed and it takes them a month, two months to die. And it's a lot of suffering involved. So when my mother finally passed away, we were happy as a family because it took a lot out of us. And the one thing about my mother dying is... a. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to everybody in my family now, my immediate family. Uh, her death has brought a lot of us back together. So that's one of the good things I could say. And uh, yes, Gianni, it's much worse. It's much worse to see your loved ones suffer than to say goodbye. It is. Because it's just sad. You know, they can't do anything. And to watch them when they're struggling to breathe in the final two days of their life and, and, they're, and they're struggling for breath, it makes me say to myself, 
I wouldn't want to do this. I mean, this is a horrible way to die when you can't breathe. You can't get your breath. You're laying on your bed. But unfortunately, that's how the human body shuts down. Lee shames his family. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate that. Do you feel good, better saying that now? Let Brad Beal stay. Brad Beal, he's always been somewhat of a dickhead. If he gets a little bit bad, then you can block him. Chunky Chunk, oh boy, I haven't seen you in a long time. It's good to see you here. Family first, glad to hear it. Yep. Michael Squeagle, my hamster just died. He was suffering for a while. Okay. Got some weird people. What the hell is up with the... Is it like Saturday... I, I never come on this early. Is Saturday... Is this like the weirdo hours right now? Okay. Save Jacob. Please, people. Save Jacob. Uh, um, Asino just put it up. Appreciate it. It's a GoFundMe page. And I'll put it up in my... Uh, I'm going to put a couple things up today in my community page. This will be one of them. Well, look who pays us a visit. The man himself. We have had our issues, but family is the most important. The one's connections to their mother is everything. Rest in peace, Mrs. Cole. And thank you. Uh, uh, sit down. I appreciate that. Okay. I want to talk about a, a, a couple other things. I haven't really spoken uh, on this subject with Chicago um, because of the fact that uh, there's been a lot, a lot of stuff going on in my life for the last three weeks with my mother and stuff. And I just, I'm not going to make this a long, drawn out thing with Chicago Muscle. But the reality is this: there were a lot of people in here that got very mean toward people that were nice to them because of Chicago Muscle. And now we have people doing apology tours. Apologizing is one thing. But when you get up there and apologize and lose your dignity while you're doing it, it's pathetic. Am I speaking about Mike Slick? Mike, I am speaking about you. You are apologizing to people. And they were humiliating you. And it sounded really pathetic, dude. I mean... You got to know, you know, apologize. And the best way to apologize to people is to call them up, maybe do it separate. But when you get on there and you apologize, it's kind of pathetic, especially when you do it as weak as you did it. It was a weak apology. And then when you get abused by people and you just sit there and you keep apologizing to them, that's called ass kissing. You did it. You know, look at Chicago Muscle. All you people that got behind Chicago Muscle. He's, how many times did he come in here and run every time things got tough? And once again, Chicago Muscle ran because it got tough. The man came in here screaming and hollering like he's the toughest guy in the world. He's a biker. He's, uh, he's been in prison. He uh, beat Godzilla in, in, in Chicago. They had a fight downtown. He won. And there were so many of you people that think that, that act like you're smart, but you bought what he sold. I'm talking about smart people that actually bought what this man sold. And you know what? It, it, it is even amount of, uh, about you, the fact that you bought what he sold. The fact of the matter is that he was doing ruthless stuff. He was doing ruthless doxing. He was putting up people's families. He was doing everything wrong that a human being could do to other human beings. I mean, that, that's we have a lot of people doing that now. We got people all over the place doxing people like they don't care. If you dox one person, they're going to dox you back. If you talk about one person's family, they're going to start talking about your family. So the best thing to do is not to talk about families. You know, can't we fight amongst ourselves? I mean, it's a horrible thing to be bringing up. You know, I heard something recently where somebody was talking about 
uh, two different shows. We're talking about people's wives and girlfriends and where they worked. Uh, how to get them fired, to call their jobs, to send in emails. That's some punk shit right there. Why would you do that? What kind of human being does that? And, and, and that's what your shows are based on? Going after people's families? And every day you come on and do the same shit every damn day. And you see these poor women that get pulled through the mud because their husbands are in battles. And you listen to these women that are hardworking women. They're out there. They're busting their ass. And their husbands are getting them torched. Absolutely torched. Can't believe it. Is this what... And, and then, oh God, the women groups. You guys have gotten involved with the women groups. Hey guys. You're going to mess with those women, you're going to get burned because they're a lot more vicious than us men. They'll be your friend one day and they'll be slicing your throat the next. This is why I don't do lives no more. I, that's why I hardly do lives anymore. That's why I drop videos because of the fact of what's going on in here. I want no part of it. None. If someone wants to call me names, I hate FBS. With a passion in my heart. He hates me with a passion in his heart. But I ain't going to talk about his family. And he doesn't talk about my family. So let us hate on each other. We could take it. You know, we could take this back and forth. You have gun smoke on here talking about doing sexual stuff to a man's wife. Gun smoke, shame on you, dude. Shame on you. I was listening to that. I couldn't believe that I was listening to you saying these things. Even if you hate that person, why would you do this? It really questions you as a man, dude. You want to come on? You want to put stuff up, making fun of me and making fun of other people? Fine. But attacking a man's wife and saying what you will do to her sexually? Really? I have an idea, Gunsmoke. Go out and get a woman and do it to her sexually. Because that's low life shit right there, dude. And it's funny, when I first met Gunsmoke, I thought he was a nice guy. Everybody thought he was a nice guy. And he's at this new level now. He's at this level of treachery that you cannot believe. And the stuff he's saying and doing, and he comes on every day and he puts up videos on people and uh, likes to make fun of them because we don't do it back to him. And I'm not going to do it back to him. But gun smoke, really, dude, I don't think you're a bad guy. I think you're in a bad situation and you're getting caught up in it. If you want to attack people, attack them as individuals. Don't attack their families. And I know you have had it done to you, and that was wrong, too. But it, it, it's just horrible stuff, people. And it's not going to stop any sign soon. Now that the women groups are here, oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, now it's come to a whole new level with the women groups. How anybody can call this uh, mob tube, mob genre, uh, very few shows do anything on the mob anymore. This is like uh, maybe bitch tube. People acting like a bunch of bitches. Let's talk about somebody's family. Let's talk about someone's beautiful, innocent wife our sisters, our sons, putting pictures up. And you know why I bring this up? Because Chicago was in the middle of it. Chicago lit the flames and made it a lot worse. And then what did he do? He took off. He abandoned everybody. And he's the one that started all this stuff. People say, oh, no, he did. Yeah, he did. He really did because he did it the worst. And you know what made it worse? He didn't show his face and he had suckers doing this shit for him. Putting up stuff for him. 
while he stood there and said, oh, put that up, Deadly. Oh, Mike Slick, put that up. And they put it up. And then everybody, people that we thought were our friends were in a chat room cheering them on. And when he turned against those people, the people in the chat rooms that we thought were our friends cheered him on. And then when, when he turned on people in the chat room, the chat room turned on them. Maddie, you know what I'm talking about. You remember how quick they went after you. Flipped right on you. So, and, and I've been dying to get this off my chest, people. Because of the fact that what happened with him and how many of you guys fell for it. It's kind of funny. It's not funny what he did. It's funny how stupid people can be. And people could say, oh, Lee, you fell for Danny Trio shit. You know what? I kind of did. But here's the difference. Danny Trio didn't dox people. Danny Trio didn't put shit up on people. Everybody knew who Danny Trio was once they found out. They know what he looked like. We're talking this guy, muscle. Nobody knew what he looked like. But let me rephrase that. I knew for six months what he looked like. But I didn't dox him. A lot of people knew what he looked like. They had an idea. I mean, his pictures were floating around here for a while. People seen his pictures, but they wanted to, they wanted to call him uh, David Monpass. <laughs> Poor David Monpass. Okay, uh, let's read some of these stuff. I'm not going to ever talk about this again, people. This is it. This is the show. I'm talking about it. Never again am I going to even talk about it. Gunsmoke knows exactly what Grammy's curtains smell like. Okay. Uh, now, my, my, my advice to Gunsmoke, even though I know he doesn't want any advice, is, dude, man, talking about people's wife, what you're going to do with them sexually, find yourself a woman first and do it with her sexually before you try to talk about, like, you're a player. Chai Hooker, let me know when I'll be there. Yes, I do, Maddie Marinette. Listen, I'm going to drop the invite, whoever wants to come up. And invite's there if people want to, whoever wants to jump up. Even if you want to say hello, we don't have to get up here and gossip and talk shit. CM, Lee Cole, I'm going to expose you. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you something. Uh, he did some pretty horrible stuff to me too, you know? But he, the worst thing he did is he never left when people were being abused because of him. When people's families were being attacked because of him. He is the worst person that ever showed up on YouTube. On here. And this, he's the worst. Because he ran. Big tough guy. He ran. And he is a big guy. And Chicago, I know you're probably sitting in here watching this. But you, you, or someone's going to come back and tell you. But the reality is, you ran, dude. You bragged about how tough. Not only did you run. Down neck, how you doing? Thank you very much, Lee. You're 110% correct. My condolences, Miss Angel Gotti. I'm grateful for your forgiveness. May my snug down neck. You don't have to worry about that, man. I'm just saying what I have to say. You know, I appreciate the 999. I'm going to bring on Joe Bay 8th. Joe, how you doing? Hey, what's up, buddy? Uh, Joe's here because we're going to have a little thing going on tonight. Uh, Joe's going to be uh, doing, uh, talk, we're going to be doing a boxing match. I'm going to join him, and we're going to judge an old boxing match. And which boxing match is that? Mayweather was fighting who? Jose Luis Castillo. And it was a very close fight, right? A very close fight. Yep. A lot of people think Castillo actually won the fight. And so what we're going to do is we're going to judge it tonight and have a little fun, right? Definitely. And we're going to see who really won. 
And if someone, you know, and if someone could put that in here, I would really appreciate it. Exposed. I don't know who you are. Exposed. Show your face if I don't know who you, who you are. Exposed. <laughs> I don't like feel, feel like bringing new people in there and getting somebody's uh, penis. You That's the big thing now, Joe. People are dropping little tiny penises. I know, man. I I remember it happened uh, a couple of maybe last year. I guess the kid, um, Mount Avenue and Eighty Sixth Street. Because you know I'm not from there, so I I don't know. I guess you know. Who said you? Well, that's what people say anyway. Ah, who cares what people say? I've been here, and I'm not from New York my whole life. Oh yeah, here goes, my, here way, goes my mother. My mother being plot, uh, buried in the family plot in New York. <laughs> my <laughs> condolences to you. Yeah, yeah, it's next Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday at Wednesday at eleven o'clock. Yeah, I actually looked up where it is. It's not actually that far. It's probably like thirty miles from where I live, which in New York driving time, that's like a six hour drive, but um it shouldn't be too bad. Well, if you want to go, just let me know and I'll I'll tell you the plot and everything. It's a huge yep, cemetery. Yep. It's a huge cemetery, you know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's a monster. And, yeah. uh, uh, but you know, I'm surprised Joe, because a lot of people have asked me about going and I had to give them directions, right? you know, which was really nice. And New Yorkers are going, you know, guys that people in that area, you know, a lot of people are right on the edge of Brooklyn and Nassau and all that whole area. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's not really too bad. I mean, it's a shot down the boat parkway for me. So, But anytime you go anywhere in New York, it's always going to be far because of the, the traffic. Oh, forget it. Yeah, it's going to be real far because it depends what time you leave, though. You got to get the right times. You can't leave when school's getting let out or like rush hour traffic. You got to go at like 430 in the morning. So there's all types of construction they're doing. So it, it's a mess. But I guess you get used to it. Uh, Chicago Muscle should have stayed with his minute clips. You know what he should have done? He should Chicago should have taken his beating like a man and kept on going on. What happened with Chicago Muscle? I've been out of the loop and like what? So now he oh, he got he got exposed and and I from what I hear he's still running. <laughs> uh, the last time he was spotted, it was going down the turnpike. I think it was in uh, Missouri on his way to Arkansas. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it's that's it, what really scared me about the YouTube thing is because, like, you know, you're coming in contact with people that you have no idea who you're talking to. You have, you know, people befriend you, you know, they do this, they do that. You got to be very careful. You know, I mean, right. people support. I mean, at one point I supported Chicago Muscle, but I, I really didn't know who he was. And then you find out down the line, oh, the guy's this, he's that. You know, I mean, it's just. At the end of the day, it's uh, ridiculous. But yeah, and and you know what was ridiculous about it is when he said he was all these things from a military hero to a, a biker gang, and uh, he was in jail for first. Uh, it it wind up he he robbed a store, and his getaway was running down the side of a highway. Here we go. And he robbed the store without a gun. They they mm. grabbed they grabbed the clerk and threw him to the ground. And uh, they robbed the place, and one guy got caught driving away. He got caught running down the street. So that's the great robbery that – that's the great armed robbery. <laughs> it's, Jeez. People, if we don't see people's faces or we don't know who they are, some people that have avatars, we know who they are already. But if, we, if people come in here and, and we don't know who they are, there's still a few people hiding, and we know who they are. They yep. just don't want to show their face. But, yeah, you know. and then the people that just get on YouTube to just, you know, like do nothing. I didn't get, never did YouTube to fight with people. That really wasn't the goal. And like, but it could very well consume you, you know what I mean? And then that's all you're doing is, you know, just going at people or whatever. And it, you know, it becomes, uh, at times it becomes troubling. Because you really don't know who's on the other end, like who you're dealing with, you know? People no, you threaten don't. people. You have you no know? idea. And that's, right. what this, this, that's what this case wound up to be. We, we didn't know what we were dealing with. So, you know, this is why I don't do that many lives anymore, Joe. I, I yeah. Don't. 
you know, I enjoy dropping videos. That's rather, the best thing to do. I rather go off after these informants because there's people on here to kiss these informants' asses. Oh, uh, forget about it. That's a whole other thing. I mean, it's not even. I really don't get too involved with the informants because there's a couple of reasons. But one of the reasons is like, you know, they've been lying their whole life. And guess what? You know, me being on earth for 47 years so far, I know that, you know, it's difficult for leopards to change their spots. You know what I mean? Like you, you lied your whole life, your whole life. You lied to everyone. You looked in the mirror, you lied to yourself. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to stop with the lies? No, it just becomes a continuation of what you've done your whole life. And that's human nature, unfortunately. And um, the other thing is, you know, there's enough people going at informants. And believe me, any of these informants, they can't look at themselves in the mirror. They just can't. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, that's the thing. They, they try to make excuses why they can't. I like to answer. Manny right. Marinara. Um, I've seen a thousand faces of you. We don't know who you are, but you have you have your funerals. You don't get on here. You don't attack families, uh, and neither does Zio. You have your little routine going. Uh, I wouldn't even put you in other leagues, uh, to be honest with you guys. Okay, we got guys like uh, Common Sense running around here. We know who he is and what he's done, <laughs> uh, but you know he still refuses to show his face. So yeah. you, know, that, you know, so. Come on, I've seen so many. I've seen a hundred pictures of Maddie. There's like a suspicion. Who's Maddie? He's either a six, an eighteen year old or he's a sixty year old. I mean, the pictures they put up on this guy is amazing. Yeah, from what I understand, he's pretty cute too. So, down neck, no apology. You, you already did your apologies, brother. You don't have to apologize no more. Uh, and you know, listen. Uh, what I'm talking about, apology tours. When you go up and apologize to people who smoke you while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. We've we seen Mike Slick get up there and, and smacked around like a bitch. Mike, Smick, Mike Slick got up there and told us how tough he was, how he was the baddest guy in the whole world, and how he's going to do this to people and do that to people. And what happened? He jumped up there. And not only that, here's, here's what gets me, Joe. That show that Muscle had. He was going up against SoFlo. SoFlo took his show away, invaded his show, and got all his people on his show. So Muscle lost his show. He was, humili he was humiliated. He was absolutely humiliated. And he can't even show his face. Yeah, man, that's terrible. His enemy took his fort over. It was like his fort got raided one within 15 minutes. Everybody muscle went after took over his, his fort. <laughs> it, it was like, are you kidding me? It was kind of funny, actually. Tough guy muscle. The guy he's fighting with comes in with an army and takes his fort. <laughs> so he's no longer doing shows, Chicago muscle. No, he has no fort. He lost his fort. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, he lost his fort. Jeez. You think yeah. people would learn at some point. These things never end up good. No, they and... don't. They don't. When you start talking about people's families, you're gonna have people come at you so hard. You know when I see that I get turned off. Like when I see that, like, you know, I seen I was going through my feed and I seen something. I'm not gonna say the guy's name who it was, but he's like talking about, you know, like this guy has been arrested for drugs and he's been arrested for guns. And he's, and I'm almost like, okay, now, you know, like, really, like you're going to get someone, if you're going to look to get someone put in jail, well, then you better start thinking about what that person might do if he shows up at your doorstep. See, this is because what's going to, this is what's going to happen, Joe. Somebody's going to show up at the wrong door. Right. Are mm -hmm. you going to show up in the wrong street? And when you do that, and it's going to happen, guys. These guys that be running into these neighborhoods saying, oh, I'm on your street. Okay, fine. All fine and good. But if someone comes out with a baseball bat and they got fire in their eyes and they're heading with you, toward you, what are you going to do? Right. What are you going to do with a man yep. with a baseball bat that's angry? You're going to yeah. have to shoot him? I mean, what are you yeah. going to do? 
get you may have to shoot him, and then what? Then we know what happens from that point on. Yeah. And what happens if he has an aluminum baseball bat? Yeah. Where he can get a nice grip on that rubber rubber handle. Yep. And hit you in the kneecaps, break your ankle, break your feet. What about if he has a like a yellow wiffle ball bat and he cuts the top of the bat and he stuffs newspaper in it, right? <laughs> and he tapes it back up and he hits you with that. He could torture. be in trouble. <laughs> it's torture. It's almost it's almost funny watching people go to go to people's houses because you know something's gonna eventually happen. Yeah. You just know it. There's a few people in here that I would never go to their house. I, I'm not going to mention who they are, but there's certain people I would not go to their house. Yeah. You know, well, it, certain you, you just get that, that bad no. feeling about them. You yeah. Know? But it's going to be the little nerdy guy that they, they're going to go to some guy's house to who they think's a nerd or something. And the guy's going to surprise the hell out of them. Or the guy's right. going to have a family member there. Yep. That's it, why, let me tell you, man, I am so glad. That, you know, I cut my teeth on this YouTube in like the mob genre, you know what I mean? Because I know how to like sit on someone and lay on them, you know what I mean? And make sure I track their movements a little bit, you know, and then catch them while they're at a freaking, you know, a McDonald's drive through you know what I mean? Like, let me ask you, you a question. really got to think about it. Let me ask you a question, Joe. Do you ever regret yeah. when you got in the car and went to the house? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Okay, what do you what would you have done if he came running out with a baseball bat? Then I would have pulled out what I had, and my thing was a lot bigger than what he had. You think I'm going to someone's house with my dick in my hand? Are you nuts? No, 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 no. no I'm, a, I'm a scared dude. I'm a scared dude. If Trust you jump me, out I'm car, scared. But here's the thing, Joe. If you jump out of the car with your dick in your hand, that's gonna that's gonna definitely make him not bother you. Yeah, and then the thing is this. If I jump out of the car with my dick in my hand, I'll have to have tweezers and a fucking telescope to see what I'm doing, and that might be, you know, just enough time for him to get the drop on me. So, no, yeah, but yeah, yeah. why I don't regret it is because, like, you, you know, I'm not going to say what happened. I mean, I regret the whole incident is what I regret. Like, I regret being involved in it, you know. Like, right. what happened during it, that's, you know, I mean, that's just um, how I am. I mean, would I ever do it again? Probably not. But if someone's going to, like, you know, go after your family, you know, then what do you do? You know, I mean, it, it wasn't like just, you know, like um, them targeting me. You know what I mean? Like, you're putting my mom's name up and my mom's picture up. <laughs> Are you nuts? Oh, someone did that to you? Yeah. And they were going in the chat and they were like, you know, having my mom's name commenting and like, you know, my brother's name commenting, you know, and it's like if my family's seeing this, you know what I mean, like, you know, um, it just gets and at some point you got to draw the line. You know, and unfortunately. I acted the way I reacted, and um, it is what it is. But I can't really, like, you know, beat myself up over it. You know, I mean, it just, it happened, and um, you move on. I like to say one thing. BK, you're being super sensitive. So I, I'm saying something right now and say, stop. You're telling me to stop my nonsense? Dude, I'm saying what I have to say. I mean... Why yeah, he was being Mike? That was that's the one thing I regret because he's my friend and he stood with me and and like you know, I don't really want to be the person because I know how he is, you know, and and we've talked about it a million times. He, you know, we have short tempers and you know we don't when we have when we're upset. We don't really think about what can happen in twenty minutes, you know. So um, that's one thing. That's the most regretful thing I have about it is, you know, like, because then I started getting other people involved and I, I don't want anything to happen to him, you know, and he, he's like really trying to protect me. But in reality, I didn't really protect him. So that's one of the things that I regret. Yeah, I really regret it. And, you know, 
I the really don't. Do, yeah, the best thing to do, guys, if, if, if people are, if you're on here and you feel like you're being threatened and stuff, and you feel like you want to get in a car and go hurt somebody, don't turn, do it. Don't turn off the shows. Yeah, don't, don't do even it. listen to them. You know, I listen to FBS attack me all the time. Even I won't even be talking about the guy, but he'll still say stuff. But yeah, don't you know, do it. The best, the, the best thing to do. Is people used to send me clips of him saying stuff to me. I and I told him, don't send me no clips. I don't want no clips of anybody saying yep. anything about me. Mm -hmm. Because we all have a certain amount of people here to follow us. So if 200 people hate us, say someone's in their chat room saying horrible things about us. 200 people already hate us. And they're in that chat, let's say. They, you know, nothing's gonna change. That's it. Yep. You know, people people let this go. They let it bother them too much. Uh, yeah. The thing with Chicago, the thing with Chicago that bothered me is all of a sudden you, he had 250 people in his uh, chat room. He thought they were there for him. But most of those people in that chat room were haters. He had about 60 people following him. But he was under the assumption that he had all this power and all these people. No, they weren't. They were there. Hate, th those are the haters that are there. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have 160 people that want to watch my show than 320 where half the people hate my guts. Yep. You know, and that happens all the time. And it never ends. You got to keep pushing that envelope. So, like, you know, once you start with one family member, you can't backtrack off of that, you know, because the people that the 60 people you have, they'll go bye bye, you know, or they, you know, it just, then you have to go to like from the mom to the dad, the dad to the cousin. And it's just like, let's see who could outdo. And you get into one of those pissing contests where it's like, okay, it's, who wants to be a part of that? I mean, yeah. they, 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 don't, years they, old. they don't. And hey, Tony, Tony Silo. Tony, I can imagine someone run, running up on your house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be a very bad situation. Because you don't know who people are. You have no clue. You have no clue. Yep. And I got to admit, I know Tony, you know, I mean, a, Tony a was a very, gun smoke. Tony so. Silo was a successful boxer, a big guy. A lot of people don't know that. You go to his house, what are you going to get? You're going to get his fist in your face? Yep. You're going to get hit by a, a professional boxer in the face? You know, Imagine that. Yeah, just like that. You don't know who you're fucking with. It's amazing. It, it's almost comical. And and now, now they're showing people's houses. And, and when they show your there house, you, go. you got your family in your house with you. Oh, man. Tell me about it. You got children in your house. You got uh, you, you, your woman in your house. And don't mess with these women channels. They'll show your bathroom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got four, you got, when you got one woman jump in to attack you from, from her show, the next thing you know, two of her friends are there. You got three shows, or you got 300 people attacking you. Yeah, so, it, it, I mean, I guess that people like that, but yeah, I don't know how well you're going to grow from that, and it's only going to lead to problems, you know, like it just, it never ends, basically. Uh, Renee, Tony Silo, I have deep respect for you because your unbelievable boxing knowledge. I was watching you with Lee the other night. Yes, but I actually seen uh, one of his boxing matches. The guy was not a bum. He was a very good fighter. So Tony Silo is his name, right? I would what, love um, Tony, you should come hang out at the show. Tonight we're doing a show at uh, 8, 8 Eastern on uh, – I N B I M N B nine nine Eastern. Oh, nine Eastern. That's yeah, right. we had a little uh, change. So, Tony, if you want to show up there, and maybe you could jump on, and uh, we're going to be talking about some boxing. That would be really great for you to do. Yeah, and what we're going to try to do is kind of get away from the BS and just go on to bigger and better things, things that we like. You know, we all have a similar uh, liking of sports and. Boxing. I, I'm a big MMA fan. Lee's a big MMA fan, boxing fan. So, and I really enjoy, and I really enjoy what I'm doing now. I'm dropping videos. I've never been so happy on here. Uh, my numbers are really good. Um, 
I'm not f coming up here fighting with people. I could do a live whenever I want to. I don't really care how many people show up in my live because the people that show up here are people that want to be here. And, you yep. know, I don't They're want that. They're there for you, Lee, and only you, which is good. Angel Gotti. Uh, Angel says, it's not a big deal. Forget it, down neck. Yes, down neck. You did your apologies. Do not turn this into an apology tour, whatever you do. Uh, you said what you had to say. I, we've all made mistakes in here. We all apologize and mean it. Uh, then when you have some people that do apology tours. They don't. There's some When you do really bad things, you can't apologize. Right. There's certain you, things you can't yeah. take back. Yeah. Yeah. Once you put someone's family up. There's no, go, there's no going back. And, and especially if you're going to put someone's family up and another person's going to counter you. Because you've got some crazy people on here that will counter you. The down neck dude, he seems like a cool dude. He seems like, you know, I mean, I don't know what he said or what he did, but, you know, I like the guy. So No, he never really. He was, he was, in, he was in the chat room. He wasn't up there uh, saying stuff. Right. Yep. Uh, it's very, very, you got to really watch what you do and say on here. That's the other thing. I, I like reading knuckle. about bare knuckle guys. Old, you, you know something, Irish mob? That they got bare knuckle fighting now. Did you ever think that they get back to bare? That Greg Hardy, that big guy, got knocked out the other mm -hmm. night. He got knocked out by some guy that looked like he was out of shape and everything. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, that bare yeah. knuckle is crazy, man. Yeah. Oh knuckle. man, if you want to, you know, it's crazy that smacking contest too. You ever see that smacking thing they do now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd rather be punched in the face than smacked in the face. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, you don't want some guy with some huge hands smacking you across the face. So I know we talked off air, but I might as well bring it up. What What did you think of uh, Volkanovski uh, Makashev? I thought Volk won it because Volk broke him in the fifth round. He broke him. Yeah, he 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 laid down. He knew, and if you look at their faces in between rounds, uh. Ishmael was, he couldn't even, um, he, he looked scared. If they fought again, Volkanovski will kill him, like just like he did to the other guy he fought again. Because he'll, Holloway. Like, yeah, Holloway. Remember he fought him? It was yeah. real close. And remember what happened yeah. the next time they fought? Yeah, that was him. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because he has no fear of him now. He he knows that Israel was, was is a lot of hype. You know, yeah, he, but but he's good, Mahashiv. Very, but, um, very, very Volkanovsky, good. I mean, he's like a different animal. Yeah, but he lost the fear factor now. Yeah, I mean, people are going to look at the Volk tape and say, "This is how I can beat this guy." If that would have went on another round, was, oh, another brought, minute or two, yeah, he, he would have been out. They would have stopped the fight. He was he was hitting him with the ground and pound. Yeah, and, and he was wrestling. He was on top of him too. You know, and it's like, well. The other thing is, though, that I noticed, like he was getting, you know, he was getting Volk in the clinch and he got him down a couple of times, but he didn't do any damage when he did it. You know what I mean? It was just like they were like hand wrestling and stuff. When Volkanowski got him down and he had him out, you know, I mean, he was yeah. landing some elbows and yeah. once Volk got up the first time, that's when uh, Ishmael was like, damn, he just got up. No one ever got up from Ishmael before. Yeah. And he had yeah, a lot with the leg locks and everything. Uh, Brene says, I think the biggest red flag about Chicago muscle was this absolute terror being exposed. A real biker or an ex-Marine is not going to be worried about having their name on YouTube exposed. And now he's exposed. And what has he done? He's put his family in, in harm's way. Uh, his family is going to be attacked now because of him, his fault. That's a risk you run. Cletus. Lee Cole, please behave. Sorry about your mother. Thank you, Cletus. <laughs> That's definitely okay. Uh, BK Shaolin, you can't help uh, but fight with these idiots sometimes with the stupid pit. Yeah, I know BK, but jumping up on their shows all the time, I don't think that's a good thing uh, because they love that, especially when you jump on their show and there's two or three of them, you know, and especially when they start getting money off of it, too. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, that's really what it comes down to a lot of the time. 
is people give them money and they say what the people, you know, they say what they think, the, you know, they want, the people want them to say. Let's chop it's it not, up belongs to Jimmy Calandra, not Lee Call. I got one thing to say about that. Shit belongs to Jimmy Calandra, okay? If you want to go over, Josh, if, jo, Jose, if you want to kiss Jimmy Calandra's ass, go look for his next show. Go over there and praise him, okay? Nobody owns Chop It Up. Everybody puts it up. This is YouTube. You have any people put up Let's Chop It Up on YouTube? Thousands. Hundreds of thousands. What do you think? Jimmy one day and woke up and said, oh, well, I'm going to call it. Let's <laughs> Chop It Up. Yeah, well, now, you know how many people are going to be looking to trademark Chop It Up now? <laughs> Let's Chop It Up. <laughs> I'm surprised someone doesn't have a trademark. That's a great idea. Who's oh, going to yeah. run out and get the trademark? <laughs> Someone has it already, I'm sure. Yeah. You'd be surprised some of the things that aren't trademarked. Then there's some things that you just can't get trademarked because it's too it's out there. Too, right. Yeah. And it, won't, it will never hold up in court. Yep. You know who got this was a crazy thing I found out. You know, three peat. You know what that is? When you win three championships in a row, they yeah. call it three peat. You know, Pat Riley. He trademarked that. You know how much money he made off that? Because any time, like when the Lakers won three in a row, it was three peat. When the Yankees won uh, three in a row, it was three peat. You know what I mean? So, like, he trademarked the name. Okay, what Jose. Uh, Jose Allen, you're going to make me do this. I don't want to do this. Okay. That belongs to Jimmy, not Lee. This is what he does. He steals YouTube content. Okay. Well, then you left, you left me no choice here. Okay, here's some com more content I stole. Okay, I stole this content I'm about to put up. You guys ready for some more stolen content? <laughs> yeah, okay. you might be careful. You might get hit with a lot. Here we go. You got the guy Diddy Trio. Rah, 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 rah. You got the guy Diddy Trio, another fat fucking scumbag piece of shit. You know, Lee Cole, another piece of shit garbage can. I'm saying, I don't know anything about fucking New York. Can me? He claims he's from New York, another piece of garbage can. That's what he is. So, I mean, you come on here. Look at this fucking MRE, this punk. Seriously, I would stick my, I would stick my fist in his ass. This motherfucker. <laughs> Kidding me? Kidding me? What I would do to him? You see his face? I would fucking eat his face. <laughs> his nose, I would chew on it. His ass too, I would chew on it. I think I'm fucking kidding. <laughs> I don't think you're I would, kidding. I would be on his face like fight on rice. I know. He would be like the fucking uh, elephant man when I'm done with him. I'm tired of these motherfuckers. I really am. And I tell legitimate people this. I tell detectives, cops, I'm tired of these fucking punks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo, Lee Cole, you fat piece of shit. Guy Cole, he'll do anything for subscribers. You got Ted Bundy, he sits on his ass all day. He probably shits himself. This interview yesterday with Fatso and Stax. That fat fuck destroyed all the interviews. I won't be giving no interviews to nobody ever again. That's done. He's the type of guy, he will put anyone on that show for him to get subs. He's nothing but a rat. He probably needs to go take a shower, go buy a bar of soap. And go clean your ass, you ugly fucking duckling, you. That's what I do, Lee Cole, you fat piece of shit. Hopefully God strikes you and you fucking disappear. I'm not going to give certain people any life on YouTube. I don't want to mention their name. Yo, Lee Cole, you fat piece of shit. Okay, I just had to run that. I... <laughs> That's a great collage. That was great. I have the funny <laughs> feeling that Jimmy still doesn't like me. <laughs> ah, you never know. Yeah, but, but you know, it's like funny. Forgiving. It's funny you got to make fun of yourself sometimes. That's funny yeah. stuff. That's funny stuff to see people get mad, not mad, you know? And it's like, oh, well, they get that mad. You definitely got to make fun of yourself. Is right. I do it all the time when I look in the mirror and get dressed. Oh, look who I see. Anthony Luciano Ramundi. I have not seen you here. Oh, we don't see you two minutes. Do you have another avatar, my man? Or are you just not around too much anymore? I think is Islam can make adjustments against Falk in a rematch. I know unpopular opinion, but I must know that's that's you're entitled to that, Ramundi. That's your opinion. We think the other way. We think that Volk will be better because he's always better the second time around. Did you ever see them guys standing there next? He, the size difference between those two guys is incredible. 
You know that, Joe? Joe? Joe left me. He abandoned me. He left me all by myself. Hey, guys, I'm going to play something. Um, in 1989, my brothers, Danny and Tom, when they were kids, they made a, a they made a video. They made a song. They they did a song. It's a, it's not a very good song, but but we found the tape, and uh, I'm going to put it up now, and I'm going to play it, and you guys can tell me what you think of it. Um, but it's kind of silly. But I but when both of your brothers, they're they're my younger brothers, and they both passed. They're not no longer with us. But they were so full of life when they were young. So I'm going to put this up and play it. Let me know if you can hear it, please, if you, when it's playing. It's like I said, this ain't going to win no uh, Emmys or anything. Can you guys hear that? Can you guys hear that answer, please? Okay, some people can't hear that. I'm not going to even bother. I got to figure. Oh, you, Bean Town said yes. Angel says yes. Damn it. Okay. You know what? Maybe Angel could play it on her show when, when next time I'm on there. What do you think, Angel? I got rid of it. I just threw it off my board. But I, anyway, it was a song in 1989 called Rumors. And my brother, my brother Danny and my brother Tom were in a room and they started singing, singing it and they dedicated it to me. And my sister Maggie found it. My sister Shay gave it to my sister Maggie and said, and I never knew it existed until a week ago. And, uh, you know, when you get older and your family and family members are gone and some of it tragically, it's kind of uh, good to hear their voices because unfortunately when they pass, we don't hear their voices anymore. Okay. Chai Hooker will make wrestling. Uh, okay. We just did that one. I'm sorry, guys. Lee, why is Jimmy bad you? I thought he had God in his life. Exactly, King of Queens. They're informants. Remember that, people. They're informants. They say they have God in their life and everything. Not 90% of them. Some of them do change. And a lot of them, most of them don't change. Oh, let me drop this invite. I'll drop this invite again. Anybody wants to jump up, please jump up. Joe dipped on me. He he took off on me. I guess that, you know. Okay, it's down there, people. Angel has the best show, hands down. Awesome channel. Great community. Mark, don't you dare come in here and tell me that Angel's show is better than mine. What the hell? Wait a minute. I'm on Angel's show a lot, right? Oh, that's probably, that's probably why it's good. Oh, Joe just said his phone died, and he's sorry that he took off like that. Joe, your phone died? My phone passed away, yes, but now it's back on. Oh, did you plug it in? Yeah, and what happened was, I'm an idiot. I thought I had it plugged in, but I had it plugged into an extension cord that wasn't plugged in. So <laughs> I'm thinking the phone's charging. King of Queens. Angel has a great show. I just wish it was it wasn't five hours long. Um, actually, that's on a short night. Okay, you know it's yeah, funny when I go hours, on, yeah. when I go on Angel's show, I say to myself, tonight I'm going to stay on an hour. The next thing I look up, and it's three hours later. Yep, that's what know, happened. Her watch time's incredible too. 
she has very high watch time. Uh, much higher watch time. time. That means people are staying on and li literally watching her. Yep. We love Angel. Yeah, but Mark Schumacher, he just told, he just said Angel has the best show on here. So my my relationship with Mark Schumacher has has changed until he sends me a uh, cash app and then I forget about it. Okay, but anyway, Cletus, wow. I'm gonna cry to Carl like Red in the movie Friday Left Fire. Okay. Also, you forgot that Volk lost that second fight to Max. I thought Max won the third. Yeah, you know what, Anthony? You're right. Um, uh, he he probably did lose that, but the, the the thing is, he won the third fight easy. So it doesn't matter if he lost the second fight because he won the third fight easy. The he second the, fight, he did. Yeah, he did look way better in the second fight, Holloway. Yeah, and but you know what? With Holloway, he's been punched so much in the face. I don't think he's the same fighter anymore. Yeah, well, and then the other thing is these fighters, someone like Volkanovski is still improving. I mean, he hasn't been fighting, you know, his whole life. So you get better as time goes on. And I think he's actually improving. Lori Love. Hey, David, all, all good here trying to catch up on things. I've been working nights. I feel like I've missed things. But then again, it's all the same BS. Lori Love, it's not the same BS on here. You got Joe up here. We're talking about fighting. We're talking about everything. Mm -hmm. And we're not here attacking people. You know, we're just saying how it is. And we said, what we're saying about Chicago is fact. He, he Chicago was one big hustle. Chicago hustle. That's what it was. Yep, sad. Really, I mean... mean Yes, Mike, I'm the oldest brother. And unfortunately, it's my younger siblings that have passed away uh, for four now in four years. So it's. Jeez. Yeah. Box, boxer versus UFC finalizing a fighter finalizing contract 100%. Hey, Tony, you want to jump up here? You're more than welcome. If you do, let me know. I'll drop you the thing. The, the thing. I'll drop you the link. The problem is, is the boxer fighting the UFC fighter? Are they boxing or is they is it MMA? Oh, there's no way a boxer could beat a right. UFC that's what I'm fighter. saying. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like you know, yeah, it, it definitely can't happen unless he hits the guy coming in. Uh, right, but it, it just can't happen anymore. Chuck Liddell was the last guy that was a pure standing up fighter. You had great uh, takedown defense, but Chuck Liddell would never be. He wouldn't even be in the UFC anymore. He, he, the Ice Man, yeah, the Ice Man would not be good enough in his prime to be in the UFC. Yep, the Ice Man. They know how to take it down. Yep, that's the key, man. That jujitsu and get that getting him on the ground. Forget it. That's uh, tough to beat. That. That's why Khabib was unbeatable. Yeah, but what would Khabib do against Volk? <sighs> That would be interesting. That would be very interesting because uh, Ishmael fights Khabib. They they and even um, Cormier Cormier said when they fight, it's very even. In the, in the, uh, it's very even. Yep. The other thing is, you know, who would have gave Khabib a good shot? I would love to if he would have fought GSP. I think that would have been a good fight. Yeah, but we'll never know how good GSP really was. Yeah. Because a lot of his fighting was done with steroids. And uh, he was a great fighter, but we'll never really know. A lot of these guys earlier that did these roids and stuff, um, and don't get me wrong, I think he's a great fighter, but we never know how good they were because it's, it's the same with the Ham, uh, Hamill, not Hamill, the other guy, the guy got hit by the, the, the train. What he got? I know Dillashaw. He got. He was with Juice. He got suspended for two years. Dillashaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dillashaw, and he hurt his shoulder in that fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He should have never fought in that fight because he was injured already. You know what? Who a fighter that I really liked, and when I found out he was on Juice, was you remember Shane Carwin? He's oh, yeah, the fighter. Yeah. A heavyweight. He yeah, kicked he, the shit out of Brock Lesnar. Yeah, he was a one-punch fighter, though. If he, did, if he didn't punch you, you, you were going to beat him. Well, that was the thing, right? He had no... But he stand-up. 
I used to really like Shane Carwin. And then Who do I uh, think won the Hagler Leonard fight? Hagler won it easy. If you sit down and, and, and score that fight, Leonard only won the last 10 seconds of each. That was a big fixed fight. Hagler was Hagler was so disturbed by it, he never fought again. Yep. We actually did that fight. That was one of the first ones. I had Hagler winning by like two or three rounds, or maybe even 116, 112, eight rounds right. to four. But um, you know, it's like it's like anything else, you know, like the announcers, you know, the punch stat numbers, like you said, it was it was only the last 10 seconds he would flurry at the end of the round. I mean Okay, uh, BK Shallon in Chicago always I used to love the way he used to have them press one and two. And they would all listen. Everybody would hit one or two. I, it, it was hilarious. Yes. But what man. would he do? <laughs> He had them press one or two no. for what? Like yes or no? Yeah. Ah uh, man. Oh, okay. Bye. Okay, Tony wants the link. I'm sorry. I wonder if he's uh listening, Chicago Muscle. Oh, a guy like that, you guarantee he's probably listening and he's telling his wife right now, I'm gonna kick their ass someday. Wait until I see them again. I don't want no problem with him. And as a matter of fact, I, you know, quite frankly, I think he went after Lauren and normally that would be like uh, something that I would get involved in. But um, I decided not to. And look at how it worked out anyway. So yeah. probably was uh, a smart move. OK, the links, the links down there if you want to grab it. Tony. Uh, see that Cletus, you can't uh, be on CMS nuts. You have comments wanted or needed, but I'll let whatever. Okay, I'm sorry, Lee. How you doing, my man? What's going on, brother? How are you? Sorry to hear that. Good. Um, Good. So uh, how, how's your day today? What brings you by today? I was just doing some therapy. You know, I just had surgery, so I was at therapy, and I got up early and just chilling. I think I'm not going to say who you are, but I think that we discovered who you are. Really? Yes. Well, we're going to see in about 12 days, we're going to show two rounds of my fight and two rounds of Vinny's fight, same night. Oh, really? Well, yes. you're, you're, you, I didn't realize you That's fought only against... if the lady allows it. Well, you actually fought against some really good fighters. Uh, two of them were all right. The rest of them were. Yeah, yeah. They, were, they were more than all right. There's no big deal. All right. Yeah, but I mean, if you got in the ring with those guys, there was a reason, and, and you lasted – uh, with one of the guys, and 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 you really put up a good fight. So uh, my bet. So, I uh -huh. went up, are you talking about the heavyweight fight? Yes, the heavyweight fight. I went up twenty five pounds for that fight. Well, you you put up a good showing. I tried. I did my you best. Know? You know, yeah. you did yeah. it's obvious that you know your boxing. Uh, uh, may I ask who was your trainer? Phil Borgia. And are you guys still close? Yes. And he's still pretty active? Uh, Phil's getting older. Phil's 77 or 78 right now, I think. Right, right. So do you miss the, do you miss the game? No, I'm actually involved with it a lot. You know, I've had offers to do some announcing and stuff. It's just that you got to be very careful, and I do curse a lot. So, you know, they want you to go do this, do that. There's um, DAZN, I think, just put together 20 channels. Is for wow. Whatever. But how about this? Deontay Wilder. We talked about him the other night. Yep. I'm not sure how to say the other guy's last name exactly properly, but I know who he is. Yep. Francis Ngannou. Yep. Yep. They're going to fight. Oh, they're going to fight? Yes, they are. That's the only two. That's it. Poor Francis. Uh, I don't know. Deontay. Yeah. Look like he's in great shape right now. I got to be honest with you. He's back down to about two hundred. Yeah, I think Dan. I think once he gets hit by that kind of power, he's not going to. It's <laughs> it's it's not going to be fun. Hey, you know um, who's training you, him for the fight? Huh? You know who's going to train him for the fight? Who? Mike Tyson. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Well, you know, you know something, Tony. I got an idea. Yeah. I'm not in New York, but you know, you're down by Gleason's gym a lot, right? I will be there actually Monday or Tuesday. I'm actually in Florida right now. 
So if Joe came down to spar you, would you have any problem with that? <laughs> uh, right now, yeah. Oh. I got about 30 pins put in my neck last week. So I don't think I'm going to do that. It kind of gives him a chance. <laughs> well, hey. I have to get my walker in the ring. Is that allowed? <laughs> Maybe I could hit him with the walker or my cane. <laughs> Is that allowed? Well, Joe, I'll show you. I'll send some clips to, to you of his fights, and then you'll, you'll decide he, what you that's yeah. why I love Lee. He's always he'll he's always looking to sacrifice his friend. Throw hey. me to the wolves, huh? Why don't you get in the ring with him and see what happens? You do that. Like that'd be like a comedy. like a comedy show. That'd be like a comedy show. <laughs> I, tell you. Me, I could fil I could film that and put it up and I it would go viral. I'd probably get a million views on that. A guy chasing me around the ring. Hold on about a sec. A guy yeah. said a clip. I don't watch anybody but Angel and I watch you now. Okay. A guy sent me a clip that uh, was on an FB, some guy show, right. that, that they want to have a boxing match against five of their guys against five of our guys. Yeah. You know. So <laughs> yeah. At Dam they had Damien fight in one fight. They had a, <laughs> Who will fight Damien? <laughs> I don't know. Damien, yeah, you know, Damien's on my start team, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, that would that that would be interesting. And you know what, though, that would probably be interesting. That that would be interesting. Imagine if you could sit down and uh, we can get little Jeff. We can get uh, Jeff Nadu to put it all together, and he could find five from each. We'll find five from each side. But the problem is that you have to pass the physicals to do that stuff, don't you? Not on an Indian reservation, I don't. Oh, really? You can go to the, anybody can go to the reservation and fight. Well, after we, yeah. me and Vinny both broke our necks the same year. So we fought at Foxwoods, the first oh. fights before they would pass us. How did you break I remember when he broke his neck, Vinny Paz. Yeah. He broke it on his way to Foxwoods. Yeah, in the cart. Yep. I remember when he fought Greg Haugen. That's how far back I go. That was, uh, what they fight? Two or three times? I really they fought three times, yep. First fight was a good fight. The last two, Vinny beat the crap out of him. He actually, they gave it to Haugen, the second one. Uh, was it the second one or the first one? I really the didn't... second one. I think he. I, I'm not sure. I know he lost one of them, and it was kind of like a little Vinny iffy. One. Vinny lost number one. He lost number one. Okay. He won no, number two closely, and number three, Haugen looked like he wasn't even the same fighter. Yep. Yeah, he, I remember when he broke his neck. He came back soon after that too. He came back like a year later. He actually walked into the gym with the halo on. And I had a neck collar on, and I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me. And I happened to be spending some time up in Providence at that time. And I'm like, not for nothing. You don't look like you're exactly out of shape. He goes, neither do you. I said, I've been working out in the house, but my father's getting a little pissed off. He heard something banging the other day, and I blamed it on something else. So, <laughs> uh, Vinny's father threw out Kevin Rooney and Vinny out of the house for a couple of weeks after he found them down the basement. I mean, you know. So, yeah, he was with Kevin Rooney. I remember that. Yep. He was with Kevin Rooney for the last, I think, 12 fights. Yeah, I met him one time up at uh, in Canastota. I was up there in 2019. There was uh, the Hall of Fame. Teddy Atlas was getting in that year. So I went up there, and Vinny Paz was up there, and I got to talk to him for a little bit. He seemed very cool guy, great stories and stuff. Funny as funny as shit. Yep. I yeah, mean, he's okay. funny. Uh, guys, uh, Renee says it was super obvious GB, uh, GSP was on steroids when he fought Bisping. Then they gave him the exemption for testing. LL. Yes, Renee, you're right. And also, uh, very good point here. It's proven, it's coming out now that Islam cheated in his fight with Volk. He, uh, after the, right after the weigh in, he went and put a needle in his arm and, 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 and got fluids, which was illegal because he did not get permission from the UFC to do it. Uh, the only time you're allowed to do that is if it's life-threatening. You need your fluids, then you can do it. You can get an exemption. He got yeah. an exemption, but he didn't put it through the UFC. And the problem with the UFC is they're kissing, they're kissing Islam's, not Islam, uh, what's his name's ass right now? Uh, Volkov, whatever the hell his name no, is. No, no, not Volkov. They, no, they're not kissing. The other, Khabib? I'm about Islam's, uh, they, they got a trans Islam. Khabib. Could okay. be they're kissing could be his ass right Hold now. On a second there. What happened in there is they need Conor McGregor and Khabib to fight one more time. Dana oh, White yeah. 
whatever he can do for Khabib's fighters. Not only does Khabib train them, he promotes them now. He's got the Eagle promotions now, yep. Got it. Well, right. I don't want to see Connor fight. He, Connor doesn't deserve the fight. He hasn't won a fight in five years. Yeah, that but is, he's still the biggest draw. It biggest. doesn't matter if he's a draw. Does he, he doesn't deserve the fight. Right, but he's going to generate the most money for them. So that's what they want, money. So exactly. I, I, I wouldn't watch Connor. Question, and you, you guys would know better about the UFC than me. Who did Khabib actually fight big before Connor? No, Khabib never fought any really great fighter. I didn't he know fought, he fought Gaethje, but that might have been after Gaethje. Yeah. That might have been his last Gaethje's fight. Gaethje's not a great fighter. Gaethje's he's tough. Never, yeah, he, he Gaethje. never fought a great. He Did he beat Poirier? Guy. He beat Poirier too. He, he beat, beat yeah. Dustin. He beat uh, he, Poirier. Another guy who's not a great fighter. A guy's he lost guy's a, he, the ally of Quinta dude. Um, went to five rounds with him. I never seen it. What could be? I didn't even re realize that till after. You know what's no, funny? Yeah. You know what's funny about the UFC is they'll say guys are unbeatable, but in the UFC, you're only one punch in the jaw from being unbeatable. Hundred percent. You know, 100%. one punch yeah. doesn't matter who you are. Hundred percent. That's uh, like Conor McGregor is fighting uh, Chandler. Yeah. yeah. That's official. Yeah, yeah, but, but here's what I predict is going to happen: there, they're going to do that series on TV, and at the end. Connor's going to back out. That's my prediction. You think? I I, I just think that he, if anything, he's going to kill Connor, I think Connor is going to be much slower. I don't. His body doesn't look right. He might look decent. Not steroids. Yeah, he's but just, it, he needed steroids to get better. From you got you know sometimes you're allowed to take steroids because you got broken bones in your body. Mm -hmm. I don't think he got off of them. I think he kept he was taking them and he just stayed on them. Well, he was, was up over two hundred pounds. He was allowed 12 cycles of HGH legally. And they that, haven't tested him now because he got, because uh, they haven't tested him. He's not in the uh, Yasada pool yet. And he, right. he he got out of that. And uh, I just don't like anything about him. I used to love Conor McGregor. I don't like what he does outside the ring, the way he acts and uh, uh, the, the way he talked to Perrier's wife after the fight to sit there in a the, corner like that, being an animal disgusting yeah you know it's it's just it was so embarrassing the hey. shit that he did with khabib with attacking his religion and attacking his old man and shit like that how about that attacking the bu how about attacking the bus and smashing glass where he almost blinded somebody in there that he had to pay that guy off people don't talk about that well how about uh, the girl you know nobody's talking about how the girl the girl yeah. lost his payday and was never the same in the ring after that yeah after she got that glass and she, he he had a they got paid off to shut up. They basically got paid off to shut up, two of them. And that's because Dana White wanted him to fight again. Yeah. There you go. You know, it's all about what can you do for me, and they will do something for you if they need you. I just don't think he's capable of getting in the ring again. Who's he going to fight? He's going to fight Chandler. They're going to fight. I, I don't think he's going to fight. He's, he will get beat by Chandler. Is Chandler any good? I, I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, Chandler's Chandler good. A warrior. He lost a his warrior. last three fights, but it was against the top guys. No, and in he, all he, the no, fights, no, he didn't lose his last three fights. He knocked out what's his face with a with a foot kick. No, but be, Tony Ferguson, um, he would have foot kicked. That was two that. fights ago. He fought Gaethje. Who else did he lose to? He's very good, though. I yeah, like Michael and the, Chandler. And the, fights were, and the fights were very close. The ones very were close. Yeah, were very close. They were. Yeah. I seen somebody put a comment up there. Is John Jones still in the UFC or going to fight? Yeah, him? he's fighting. He's fighting this month. Correct. This yeah, guy. Yeah. I watched this show on him the other night. How he transformed his body. You realize there's almost no no inch differential anywhere but the weight. Yeah, and he, see, and once again, he's been out for two years. No yeah, one, people don't realize you're out that long in, in, in these sports. It doesn't matter what sport you're playing. Even a baseball pitcher coming back, he's not the same for he, he has to go a year sometimes before he, he gets back his pitching arm or something. Oh, it, look, let's be realistic. Do you think Mike Tyson was anywhere near what he was when he went to prison? He, when he not even back? close. No shot. No, no. That's why. That's why Leonard. What he did against Hagler by being out for three years was pretty he amazing. Did, he did nothing against Hagler. He fought 10 seconds of each Yeah, round. but he lasted he with him. Nothing. That was the thing. He did nothing against Hagler. I'm sorry. You know, but, was... but Joe, you got to look at some things. I went back and looked at the fight after me and Lee spoke the other night. 
any time they got into a tough clinch on the ropes, that referee broke immediately. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, know, were, we, we did the fight about two months ago. We did it on my channel. I had uh, Hagler winning 116-112. Uh, I didn't I, even think it was close. What was, it? was that a 12-round or a 15-round? That was 12. Okay, wasn't that the first 12-round championship fight? It was 1987. It was one of the, it was one of them. Okay, I mean they yeah. get every benefit going into the. Oh fight. yeah, I, oh, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had Hagel win in that fight. I think by, I think it was 12, right? I think I had it seven. I thought I, I thought Hagel won eight rounds. To be honest with you, that's what I had. I had it eight eight four, Hagler. Yeah. And that's because I got fooled by them stupid 10 to 20 second flurries that did absolutely nothing. Yeah, what we do is we watch the fight with the volume down so we don't get biased by Jim Lampley and Merchant and all them guys. You know, they hype you up and they have you believe in things that, you know, are not true. So we that's take like, the volume okay. down. And I gotta we bring this, guys, I got to read this real quick. Renee says, I'm about 80% sure that Cletus is Chicago muscle. He is so emotional in this chat and butthurt, laugh out loud, just like Chicago Muscle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cletus, you are Chicago Muscle. Could very well be. Okay, so now here's something I didn't realize, Lee, and you, you probably know. I don't know if it's UFC or another MMA type of organization. Who did um, Logan Paul sign with? Or Jake Paul, the older one, the boxer. I thought he has his own promotional company now. He does, but didn't he just sign to uh, do MMA? Yeah, yeah, I think Logan. That's Logan Paul. No, that Logan Paul is going to be out for a while. He tore his knee up. I'm oh, yeah, yeah. Boxer is in training for MMA now. Really? Now I didn't know that. The other night, without mentioning any names, let's not mention any names. That could get a little bit interesting now. Now you want to go MMA and boxing? That was supposed to happen twice. Both guys backed out. Mayweather is, was involved in one of them. They you, know, you know the thing about MMA, though, is if you haven't done something most of your life and all of a sudden you try to do it, you're never going to be as good as the guy that's been doing it his whole life. Like jiu-jitsu or uh, wrestling. A wrestler is a wrestler. You know, if well, a guy's been wrestling through, you know, you got these wrestlers that are great wrestlers. He's not going to lose to a guy that's been practicing for three years. No, but yeah. if you started out with, well, this, to me, that fight, and I'm going to still say, to me, the boxing match, whoever gets hit first is going to go in that one that we would discuss. Right. All right? Yeah. I do think the Paul brother is a little bit more experienced than boxing. I'm going to agree with you 100%. I went back and watched all the fights the last two nights. Yeah, and he's improving, actually. Yes, the thing. Well, that you got to look at it this way. He's just like any fighter coming up that's fighting uh, a bunch of these easier fights. But these guys aren't easier fights. Silva is a solid fighter, even though he's older. He hit him with some good shots. Silva hit him with some good shots. I thought Silva won the fight. To be honest with you, uh, the knockdown killed it. As yeah. soon as he down, there was there was no way he could win that fight. You know that was all a uh, uh, Paul promotion, Paul everything. So. You know, yeah, and a lot of money at stake. Yeah, you great point here, Renee. Uh, this is what I feel about most athletes, including baseball players and stuff. Once they sign that big deal, they're never the same again. No, in baseball, you've been seeing that a lot lately, where guys sign these huge contracts and they're never the same player again. Why well, should you be? You're, you you got guaranteed money. You got one hundred fifty million dollars in the bank. Why do you even give a shit what you do anymore? Well, that's why I'm impressed with the Paul brother. You know, this kid came into this sport worth 30 million plus through, you know, whatever he does on social media. Yeah. And a couple of years ago, he was worth nothing. Zero. He, nothing. he actually, you know, you people can make fun of the Pauls and say whatever they want. Those guys made their money. I mean, what the second largest, the second most watched uh, talk show is Logan Paul's show on YouTube. So Logan and his, his talk show is a great talk show. I don't know if you ever watch it. It's really good. I watch yeah, it. He's got a porn star on every day. That's what's no, great. No, about no, it. he has so he has some serious people on there. <laughs> I've been, been having some legit guys on. He's yeah. been having a lot of legit guys on. I don't really see porn. Very rarely do I see porn stars on there. That's why Joe. Is that why you stop watching? That's exactly why I stop watching. <laughs> 
but <laughs> once he but, started doing getting away from that, I said, "Up, oh, I'm gone." Not to break your bubble, you really, um, you guys are watching this Castillo Mayweather fight tonight, correct? Yes. Yep. Yeah. But I, I think that was a robbery. <laughs> well, that's why we're doing it. Well, you're more than welcome to join you. us and help us score it. I would. If I'm not in the air. I most definitely will. Okay. Yeah, and, we figured. I was thinking of fights, and I'm like, you know what? I said that's the one that always. I mean, he really did get. <laughs> he, I think he won Castillo. We'll see tonight, but it was. Uh, he definitely outlanded him, which was crazy. And you know, and uh, but it's money. It's Mayweather. I mean, it, I tell you, know, you it, it, it would be interesting to score. Trinidad de la Hoya. We did that. <laughs> I oh, had uh, De La Hoya winning that fight. So did I. How about De La Hoya and Mayweather? I was. I said two fights. I was just going to yeah. say that. Yeah, because That's De La Hoya had mean, him up against the. Remember when De La Hoya had him against the ropes, hitting him with those body shots? Uh, agreed. I mean, he, he was Absolutely. ripping him with those body shots. You know, there, there's just some fights they don't want. They want it to go one way, you know. And look, Mayweather. Mayweather's apparel. I was reading articles. Sells so much, it's ridiculous. Yeah, man, he's. You got them TMT hats in there. Now they're doing jumpsuits and stuff. The yeah, but he's he also ripped off Logan Paul. Uh, yeah, I don't. I still don't think he's paid him. No, he, he hasn't. He owes Logan Paul millions of dollars and have won't give it to him. Logan Paul's so rich, he's like saying, "Okay, I'm like Logan Paul's like." Out there saying, "Don't fight." A matter of fact, it's working because of what Logan Paul's saying. People are more le less apt to get in the ring now with Mayweather because Mayweather wants control, and then he doesn't pay you the money he owes you, and he owes Logan Paul a lot of money. But you also so, got to remember something, Lee. He's got that piece of shit that manages him. Um, Al Heyman? <laughs> no, no, Al's a, Al's a nice guy. Uh, yeah, but I've been hearing a lot of shit about him lately. What's the other guy's name? Metherby? Weatherby? Leonard Ellerby. What a piece of shit. Ed, Edwin, thank you for the $10. Yeah, that, that's his I manager. That. Yep. Leonard Ellerby. Yep. I'll, thank I'll, you, Ed. I'll one second, guys. One, one second. Edwin, thank you for the $10, uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much. But this guy, Leonard Ellerby, he, he did some dirty shit, you know, before some big fights, too. I could imagine. You know, um, he had charges pressed on him in Nevada that he threatened one of the promoters that he wanted his money up front in cash before the fight. He didn't want to wait for no checks. Or the fight wasn't going to happen. Changing, it, changing us to baseball for a second. Lee, would you believe Frank Montes needs shoulder surgery? Why didn't they have this done? He got, They got ripped off on Frank Montes. Oakland ripped the Yankees off on that deal. Because Frank Montes used to be a heck of a pitcher. They got ripped off. Yeah, but the Yankees need to do their due diligence and physicals and all that stuff. The doctors didn't pick up on anything. I mean, uh, you're, you're right. Though. Look, 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 look at this shortstop, this guy, uh, Korea. He Correa, went inside yeah. the Mets. The Mets, got, the Mets were smart. The Mets called San Francisco was smart. And uh, he uh, lost course, a lot of money, too. And Minnesota is going to be stupid and give them $130 million. The yeah, Mets were giving him over two hundred million, right? Yeah, and they say his ankle injury is the worst they've ever seen. That's what I heard. And people still want to give him money. That's what I heard. If they tell you that your ankle's that bad, that must mean that it's it, it, surgery. It, they're saying it's so bad it can't be. Uh, they can't, he can't have a bar put in it or something. Really? Well, it depends how it cracks because he'll never walk the same. Yes. And he's an infielder. He he plays an important position. What's he going to DH? You're going to pay your DH 130 million. I can't believe Minnesota's giving him that money. I that says sure. that says everything you need to know about the Minnesota uh, that organization now. Exactly. And good. And and you know what? When he when he went to the Mets, I was making fun of it. And I have some Met fans, and I put it up on my Facebook. I was saying that San Francisco wouldn't sign him because he was injured and stuff. And these Met fans were yelling at me, saying, no, he's awesome. I said, he sucks. I mean, he doesn't suck. He's just not the player he used to be. He's a mediocre player now because of his injury. He's a and good the fan, And then after he was sent away, I said to the Met fans, told you. And still they're like, well, I think they should have kept him. Okay. You would have had a lot. If he was the player he was, 
you would have had 52, every team in baseball on that line. Oh, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. Italia, $20. Thank you. You know, there's certain players that you know that when they get money, they're going to still be great. And then there's other players that you know that aren't going to be great. Uh, the money goes to their head. I'll give you an example. I think that uh, that um, Aaron Judge will stay a great player no matter how much money he gets because he has that mentality. But you got some players, and there's a certain players that come from a certain island. I'm not going to say it because people are going to say, oh, that's racist, Lee. But there's a certain island where you get these players that come from, and you give them a lot of money, 90% of them go in the toilet. Are you talking about Long Island or Staten Island? Which no, one? I'm talking about an island out in the Mediterranean. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. And uh, some great players come from there. It's a little island that has the – but in the history of them guys receiving big money contracts always backfires. Look at, Tatis. Look at Tatis. I mean, the guy in San Diego, he, he, he was given all that money, and then, then they find out that he's on steroids – uh, and he's playing at half the level. This is the problem with these athletes. They give them these huge contracts. It seems like only in the NBA they'll give great players contracts, and the NBA players will stay at a high level. It just seems that way. You know what it is in the NBA? You got the crowd interacting right up with you, and they trash talk so much right to your face each other, both teams. You have to prove something, you know. And, and, base, and baseball is the hardest sport to play. I mean, nobody can – you cannot understand what it's like to hit a 95-mile-hour moving curveball, uh, fastball until you actually try it. No, nah, I wouldn't even give it a shot. I wasn't a batting yeah, yeah, game. I, I played in high school. I was I was a very good player in ninth grade. And then I played this – Rene Delavar was his name. He wound up going to the Milwaukee organization hurting his arm. And I remember I was in the plate, and he threw three curveballs at me. I, I jumped out of the way of all three of them that were strikes. Yep. <laughs> because they were over there, and they go there. You just don't – got to be at a different level when you play Major League Baseball. It's it's just incredible. Well, it's the same thing in soccer. You know, I, I, I just started watching some of this. I only watch the World Cup stuff. I think that a shot, to be quite honest. I watch. I don't know his name, so I'm going to say it. the black kid. Uh, the, I think he scored two or three goals that game. I don't know. I'm You're not, not a, a big, soccer fan. Yeah, I'm not a big soccer fan. Let me tell you something. Watch this guy one time. You'd be amazed. I've never seen nothing like this in my life. He went through six players in one shot and scored. And don't get me wrong. I think from, they're they're phenomenal athletes, without a doubt. I'm just not a soccer fan. Oh, I'm not a fan either. I just watched yeah. the World Cup. That's a yeah. tough sport, soccer. A lot of running. It's physical, too. Uh, not for nothing. They're the highest paid overall. They got the most fans around the world. Their games, they got like 100 people. Don't people. It, uh, soccer in it, uh, is so huge. People can't even imagine. And they're headed. You have people outside the stadium watching it on TVs because the stadiums are sold out. I mean, the... You just got the, the loyalty to these uh, soccer teams are amazing. Oh, it's yeah. like the, it's like NFL, same thing. And NFL is crazy like that too. Hey, who's glad the Eagles didn't win the Super Bowl? I told everybody on Angels chat they just wanted to listen to some bullshit Nostradamus that Angels are talking about. Guy picked all these Super Bowls. I'm not shocked at all. I don't like. I'm not that. shocked either. You know why? Would... I'll give you an example during that. When, when they were going to the Super Bowl in Arizona, the Kansas City fans were coming in and they were being treated like garbage by the uh, Philadelphia fans were cursing and swearing at them. And you didn't see any of that coming from the Kansas City fans toward them. No. And you just seen these bullies. These it, it, they was The way they were acting. Uh, Philly has bad fans. Believe the minute not, I said, I'm not going to say that. They're crazy, though. No, they're Didn't bad they fans. curse out Santa Claus? No, no they threw snowballs. They're bad fans. Snowballs out of They're bad fans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're bad fans. Whenever they don't win anything, I'm happy. Uh, just because of the fans. I don't dislike the teams. I like the Eagles. But I usually I would go for the NFC team, but the fans don't deserve a champion. That's what it comes down to, in my opinion, about the Philly fans. Say that, take that whatever way you want, Philly fans. But the way you guys act, even when you're on the road, is is disgusting. Uh, you go up there for a boxing match, and they, they have a place called the uh, Rosemont Horizon or the Blue Horizon that we used to go up there and box at. 
these guys, if they're Philly, if it used to have all Philly fighters against guys from out of state, if they're boxing in and win, they'd spit on them, throw a beer on them. I mean, they, they were just terrible people. Isn't that in Philly? Isn't that where uh, uh, Rocky Balboa fought Spider, uh, Spider Rico? Remember that one? Yes, he did. I think it was 1976. That's it. That was yeah, that, yeah, that was it. Then you have Hagler lost a couple of fights in Philadelphia that were very questionable. I mean, you got very questionable decisions going on in those those gyms and uh, those little arenas in Philadelphia, too. Great boxing, though. Well, they, I don't think I've seen a pro boxing match, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, in Philly in over 20 years. Yeah, it's been a long time, I guess. Yeah. There was a fight, a, a decision, and they had called, and I don't remember, I couldn't tell you who it was, and they had called the, uh, the judges had called security. How many cops do you have available to get us out of here? And they said, not enough. And the decision came back completely different. I lost almost every round. Yeah. It's some tricky stuff up there. This, it, boxing is notorious for it, though. More than anything. Go back into the 70s when they had hockey, you know, with the, uh, with the Bad Bull Street Bullies, whatever they called themselves. Up Broad there. Street Bullies, yep. yep. If you remember when when uh, Russia was making their rounds around the United States the first time, they were beating the crap out of everybody. Everybody. I remember that. I remember what they did to uh, Rene uh, uh, LaFleur. LaFleur against – they played uh, All-Stars. LaFleur scored right away, and then after that, I think uh, Russia scored eight goals. Right, you know, and, and that's back Philly. when I was a kid. I remember that. How about this? When they played Philly, they they were told by Fred Shearer, I don't care about scoring. I don't care about what you do. Hit them with your sticks. Punch them in the face. And they did. They beat the shit out of them for the first yep. period. And I'm going to read this real quick. Angel Gotti, you got to remember Chicago Muscle absolutely worshipped you. Of course he would keep uh, the Cletus profile. He never w wants to leave you. <laughs> Angel, it's true. He was possessed with you, Angel. He loved you with all passion, but his little heart. Um, and then you broke his heart, Angel. You broke his little heart. Uh, Five dollars from Cletus. So, uh, Renee, come come see me at the uh, BK, and I'll buy you a Whopper before you're long. So, Cletus is saying, you remember when Muscle used to say, "Come meet me at Burger King." So, Cletus is now saying, "Come meet him at Burger King." Ah. Uh. Good comeback, Cletus. Good comeback. Burger King. I don't like Burger King. Uh, Burger King has good hamburgers. The, the McDonald's has better fries, though. Yeah. McDonald's has better fries. Have yeah. you guys ever been to Culver's? No. Okay. What Culver's, is it? It's a Midwest hamburger place, Culver's, which I think no. makes the best hamburgers. Our five guys. I don't know if you've seen Five Guys is in Jersey. I They're think there's everywhere. one on Staten Island too. Yeah, five, had, guys, every, five Guys all over the country now. Yeah. And they had to declare bankruptcy because they overexpanded too fast. And then they got into franchising out, uh, which was a smart move. Now you got this um, Shake Shack. The original one was in Manhattan. Oh, yeah. Forget about Shake Shack. You. Yeah. It, but it's crazy. You know, you, you look. All right. Fortunately, I could afford to give my somebody want to go to McDonald's today. You need to give your kids like 15, 20 bucks to get a fucking happy meal. So why oh, you forget about why, it. Are you nuts? You're right. $15 for a freaking. Yeah. At McDonald's, you get a you get a Whopper combo with fries and a drink. It's fifteen dollars. We were. You, yeah, you can go out and buy. You can go out and buy a nice. Well, not in New York. I hear the prices for steaks out in New York. Well, I live here in Texas, the upper part of Texas, where steaks are not ex as expensive as if you were out in the East Coast or something. And the steaks here, are because they, you're literally getting the cow slaughtered here. And uh, if you want to get a ribeye steak, I'll tell you what, man. You go to a butcher shop. In the back of the butcher shop, they're slaughtering the animals. I know it doesn't sound good. I know Angel doesn't like to talk about animals being slaughtered, but Angel, you have no trouble eating that steak. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, steak look. is not from dog, though, is it? Uh, don't say that. Not, not, not unless either. it's from, unless you go to a Chinese food place, it might be cat or something. But uh, yeah, that's different. It's a different type of meat cat. 
You know, there was a place, uh, not Rocky Marciano, Rocky Graciano owned a place on Northern Boulevard in Flushing. It was called Lums. He was partners in a Chinese restaurant. They got busted with, uh, I don't know, but a ton of cats hanging in the in the freezer. They shut it no, down. No, really? Holy that, shit. L-U-M-S. It was the largest Chinese restaurant in all of, of Queens. That's oh, crazy. Angel, oh, Angel, don't you live in Queens? No, she lives in Long Island. No, I mean, oh, she gets her Chinese food in Queens, though. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> hey, Angel Gotti says, CM never gave anyone money because he was too afraid of getting exposed. I'm not friends with Cletus. I'm just guessing they're not the same person. Hey, people, today's big question is, is Cletus Chicago muscle? Mm. That's the big question. We'll tell him to put his face up on the screen and we'll see. Yeah, Cletus, come up here and show you. You want to show your face, Cletus? Just tell us to drop it. And we'll bring Cletus up here. Cletus is like, I ain't showing my face. Imagine that was, yeah, I mean. Yeah, some people think Cletus is Chicago muscle in hiding. We shouldn't, like, the YouTube should come up with a thing, like the genre. If you're going to be like a troll and be one of these haters, you don't show your face, you're out. I believe in showing your face or you're fake. Are you going to talk shit about people and hide? Come on. It always comes down to the fact if you're hiding, 99% of the time, if you're hiding your face, there's usually a reason. Sometimes there's not. Some people just don't like to be show themselves. Hey, I, mean, uh, I, I watched it last night. I don't know. I think it was you, Lee. Somebody put up a, a video of Jimmy Calandria hitting bags. Did you see that? Are you fucking been, did you get nervous? Nervous? <laughs> Fight him with the pins in my fucking neck right now. <laughs> But you didn't like the way he threw that kick? Kick? What, the fucking ankle kick or the calf kick? Which one? <laughs> I thought he ripped his shorts when he fucking did that kick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, sometimes when you... There's certain times you don't show stuff, and that was one of them. Hey, Why would you put that video up? I had no idea. Well, he was trying to impress Johnny A. Like, who ain't much of a fucking fighter himself. You know, Johnny A. Light was decent with a baseball bat, but he didn't know how to use his hands. Yeah. But at least John A. Light looks like he can use his hands if he ah. does the boxing. You know, there's some people, they they just have that where you could tell they're not athletic. You know what I mean? That, that you could tell they're not, just the way they move, you could tell they're not athletic. I'll tell you what, and this is not about ass kissing to nobody. I don't give a fuck. John Gotti Jr., when he got challenged by A. Light, He's he's smart for not taking the fight because he would have got arrested for murder. Oh yeah, he would. Oh. Yeah, John, well, look at John was on. Look, the, look on at the, his the, children. How ath athletic his children are. If you're after, you know, children are usually as athletic as their parents. No, nah, but John was good with his hands and he had a lot of power. But so is his son. Right. And and his daughter is. Is it his daughter? That's it's his, his daughter. Yep. Yeah. She's so an she's, unbelievable she's a, basketball player. So you have two athletes coming from. That family like that, that says a lot about the bloodline. You know, I didn't want to try and put that piece of shit, Baroni. I sparred with Baroni. That guy had nothing. And I'm not going back far. I'm going back a couple of, maybe four or five years ago. He had he, nothing he, left. He could beat the, he, he does good. He could beat a woman, though. He can kill a woman. That's disgusting what he did. And now you got A Light trying to sit there and, and defend them on. Come on. I, I mean, was they... watching something recently about A Light, and on the show, it was like on Discovery or History Channel, and there he's doing like some sort of like interview, and they're pumping him up as John Gotti's top hitman. <laughs> How do you with a straight face? And he and he had a straight face, like his face features didn't change. Like, what the hell are you, you know, like. He just went and talked like, "Yep, I, yeah, I was your the guy." There's well, something that, coming. There's something that, coming out right now. When they, when Gravano was driving in and, and John Gotti was driving the car, now they're saying that it was a light that jumped out the back door and took out Bellotti and he took out Castellano. I'm yep. Not, well, I'm not going to tell what I heard. No, please, I'm, Tony. We need you know. We this is what we do. You know, we expose the fraud. How about this? One man, 
not two men. There were two shooters and two backups, correct? The no, four, shoot, four shooters, four shooters. Okay, four shooters. Two backups. They, had yeah. two, they had six altogether, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah. How about one man killed both men? Yeah, and we know who that guy is, too. Yeah, and that one guy's guy. because you got it down to three guys and one guy's gun jammed, so you only have three shooters at that point. It's a known fact that guy admitted his gun jammed. Well, how about this, okay? I heard that when they after the Castellano thing, when all the captains got together, right, someone jumped up and says, I nominate John A. Light, and it zipped around the room, and uh, he basically put John Gotti as his stand-in. Because Did you one, hear that because, story? Yeah, because John A. Light got up and said, look, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not Italian. And once he admitted he was, he wasn't he wasn't Aletto, he was once he said I'm not really yeah. Aletto. Well, yeah. he's the Albanian pride now. I found it amusing when he put and I'm gonna tell you it wasn't a stupid move, it was a smart move. Because they were such pathological fucking liars. When he put Gene and himself together in that show, it was that they <laughs> believed each other they knew each other was lying and they backed up the lie with a better part of a lie. The they best just... is when the John and Gene show was on, and they used to bring guys on that you know had nothing to do with them, but they would put them in the picture with them too. Yeah. They would say, Oh, we knew him from the street. We knew this one, this one. How about when Sammy was given he can't he he had no money? A light gives him a couple of grand, so he comes out and says that uh he knew A light. Okay, so and now then a year later, when Sammy's making money, Sammy goes, Oh, he's nothing. I never knew him. Okay, but now he said that he met him. Right out of prison before he's seen his family. Correct? Yes. Okay. Go back to the one he put out yesterday. And if you guys weren't on, so there was nothing to do last night. And I couldn't sleep because this next got me sleeping during the day and night. He said he was given a card. No IDs. Went from Pennsylvania to Phil somewhere in Pennsylvania to somewhere in Philadelphia. And he snuck on the second plane with somebody, never met nobody when he got out of prison. Zero. Never mentioned a light. He's changed his release story from prison at least five times that I've seen. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. All you got to do is go back and look at his shows and read his 302s on the smoking gun. And you see that Sammy changes a lot of stories. You know, now that he has Mikey Scars out there calling him out on all these stories, it's not any better for Sammy. Sammy's having a, a, a bad last 30 days. He's well, really been getting exposed. Because tapes don't lie. And if you listen to the tapes, like they said, you have to have your team telling you this for you to get that infuriated. John is probably one of the only bosses that actually met almost every day with his team. You know, and it seems like Everybody who disappeared had something to do with Sammy Gravano in business during that reign. Well, and, yeah, I mean, Sammy I, was I, a right hand man at that point. So I just, I just did a video on this when, when Mike, when Mikey was talking about, uh, called him out on several things that if you looked into it, um, they're pretty accurate. Well, look, you know, um, I've seen a lot of them in my uncle's restaurant. And met a lot of them in my uncle's restaurant. I'd never seen Sammy Gravano with any of these guys in a restaurant. Sammy Gravano went home and was just putting together a list of how can I make more money and who can I get rid of. Yep. And that's and the video I did was on how uh, it's actually a pretty good video. I don't know if you watched it. it I watched it. It, it goes down with Mikey Scars said how he killed certain guys and, and, and how he lied about it. He had certain people's ears and you trust your underboss sometimes. And uh, trusting Sammy at all is a bad thing for anybody. And no matter what you do, even in this genre here, Sammy's just, just a bad guy. I tell you what, the contract from what they're saying, the contract that they worked out between him and Michael, um, Michael is no dummy. Michael is one smart son of a bitch. I, I think he needs money a lot more than people think, no matter what he's making on YouTube right now. Who? 
Sammy or Mike? Oh, he's saying that. Sammy said that. My, uh, Michael's lo- listen. No, Sammy I- saying. No, Sammy said that uh, his last show. He said that people think I make a lot of money on here. I really don't. No, not the body type. Not when you go out and hire a professional company to take care of you. They're going to take 20, 30% of your money right off the bat. Exactly. But if anybody yeah. thinks Michael Francis didn't walk away with boatloads of money, not a car, a boatload of money from what he did, you're out of your mind. Michael Francis moved right into a mansion in California, right out of prison. So you don't get that from that. I want to see Renee box Chicago muscle. What do you think, people? Renee against Muscle. Uh, somewhere somewhere in the Ozarks. Your call, Renee. You tell us if you want to get in the ring with Chicago Muscle. We'll put it in the Ozarks. I'm not trying to be funny. Do we have a midget in our crew at all? A midget? <laughs> well, somebody <laughs> do, trying to think of what we can match them up with. <laughs> a midget. Mm. Is anybody here a midget? <laughs> is there somebody here that's a midget and not telling us? Because we may have a couple midgets listening. And listen, we love we love midgets. I, I think Angel could smack the shit out of the do. If, oh. if you're a midget, put put one in. Put one in. There's got to be a midget here. Somebody's a midget and it's not saying in something. And don't be ashamed of being a midget because midgets became very famous. I, I meant little person. I didn't mean to say midget. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna change it. I'll say dwarf. Uh, <laughs> so, Vertically uh, challenged. Hey, but listen, this is a midget's world. Ever since uh, uh, got, uh, got came out, you know. So uh, that's like I'm watching that Cotolo. and I. Ain't nothing bad about this Danny. I, I don't know any. I really don't care about him. How's that? But he came on there and he said how he could, if he ever seen you or, or Danny, he would hurt you. Then two days prior and two days after, probably because he don't want to lose his social security disability, was saying he had battery packs in his back and he can't move and he can't walk. And he better get his story straight too, that clown. Uh, and Renee's backing out of the fight. Renee's backing out. Here's what Renee says about going to the Ozarks. I don't want to go to the Ozarks because I have the feeling I won't be able to get back crazy people up there. Let me tell you something, people. I lived two years in the Ozarks. When you say crazy people, you cannot even imagine how crazy. The people from the Ozarks are nothing like any human beings I've ever met in my life. (laughs) I mean, they are... And, and there's a certain clientele, there's a certain set of people called white trash in the Ozarks that are the meanest, racist, drunkest people I've ever met in my life. And, and you never felt safe around them. Never. The things that I've seen these people do, it was unbelievable. They, uh, bloody fights. Uh, if you messed with, and if you messed around with a certain guy, say in the Ozarks, Next thing you know, you got 20 of his family members at your door. 20 well, drunk, fi- <laughs> drunk, crazy ass family members. I tell you where we went, and, and it's a, a very, very different crowd. You ever been to NASCAR racing? Oh, yeah. Okay, so now a Toro Gaddy was very good friends with Dale Earnhardt Jr. So it was myself, Vinny Pazienza, and a Toro Gaddy went to Daytona 500. So we went to one of these restaurants in there one night, and we all had on what white velour jogging suits. It was like one of them sparrow places. The people were betting to see which one of us were going to come out the dirtiest. I think these people were ready to kill us in there. I mean, <laughs> I've seen white people hate other white people so much because the way we look. No, D, no, I'm telling you, white trash, this white trash. You know, I've lived in every... I've been in, around every culture in my life. I lived in every type of neighborhood in my life. And I'm going to tell you something. They were by far the worst culture I ever came across. And not even close. They were by... You would have like this feeling of fear in your stomach when you're around them because you never know what they would do. And when you're around people that you don't know what they're going to do, that's scary. That's true. It's true. They'll come out with, they'll shoot you with a damn hunt, with a bow, with a hunting bow. 
They'll, they'll hit you over the head with a bottle. They'll shoot you. Uh, they'll, you you fight with one of them in the woods in the Ozarks, you will disappear in the woods in the Ozarks, never to be seen again. That's why, you know, uh, when people talk about going up to Muscle's house, <laughs> that's the Ozarks, people. That's all I could say. I mean, I'm not talking about Muscle being a tough guy, but if you're going to go up to Muscle's house in the Ozarks, I don't know, man. <laughs> Those people are going to come running out on you, but not by themselves. They're going to come running out with 30 other family members. Every well, one of them carrying a beer bottle in one hand and a shotgun in the other. You know, he, he's giving a bad name to the Ozarks right now. He might not make it up to the Ozarks. Yeah, yeah, he's giving a bad name to the Ozarks. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, Ozarks is beautiful. The beautiful lakes, beautiful woods. They got some great tourist towns. But 90% of the Ozarks ain't tourist towns. It's like trailers in the woods. It's uh, trailers that people have no electric. <laughs> it's Places like, that you would never think about living. But it's like you go down to Florida. You live in Millionaire Row, and the next neighborhood is Trailer Park Trips. Yeah, like in Platka, Florida, Satsuma, Florida. Those areas are, are full of those trailers and stuff and real rough areas. Chicago got some. I mean, not Chicago. Uh, Florida got some really rough areas. Oh, yeah. Really Florida, rough. Florida's and, badass areas. And, you know, like Daytona, all those cities got rough areas. They do. Well, Orlando. In, Orlando oh, Orlando's the worst. You know, by uh, UFC, the college over there, up yeah. there. Forget about it. I, was I used to love watching Cops in Orlando. <laughs> that yeah. Cops in Orlando was like, wow. That's when you realized how tough it was. Redzilla says, I know a lot of people that went missing in the Ozarks. They still never found them. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the roughest area I've seen, and I bought it, and they kept us, I think we were about 40 miles away from the Superdome. Okay, That was one of my earliest fights. They got some bad-ass towns around um, where they do Mardi Gras and all that bullshit. Oh, yeah. New Orleans? Yeah, it's effed up over there, man. Well, well, well you, know, you, you, know, you know what they say in New Orleans now, and this is how scary it is. They say don't leave Bourbon Street. No, and they say go on the, on the, on the licensed tour buses in and out if you're not staying on Bourbon Street. Okay, and John Wolf, you're here. You're, you're from that area, John Wolf. <laughs> John, is he here, John Wolf? Oh, John, Wolf, John Wolf is a New Orleans boy. So John Wolf. You know, we're talking about your city. John Wolf says best city in the nation. <laughs> wow. John Wolf driving around uh, Bourbon Street in his big old pickup truck, uh, acting crazy, right, John? I, oh, John Wolf says, I walk the side streets all the time at night. <laughs> yeah, you, you must be a badass boy. I mean, them side streets. You ever see his teeth? Yeah, back. and if you see his face, forget about it. They run now from him. Rip your, he'll, he'll take those teeth and rip your head off. I mean, he has, he has like these big giant beaver teeth. All he has to do is bite you in the side of the neck, you're done. Yeah, he's not too pleasant to look at either, his facial features. Has anybody seen this special that's been on uh, HBO about the, the, about the last survivors? It's a it's a new show. I'm going to tell you something. I watched two two of them last night that I missed. That show is a phenomenal show. If people are looking for, uh, I can't think of the name of it. What's that new show? If anybody knows, it's on um, HBO about the zombies and shit. I don't know why, but every time I think of zombies, I think of John Wolf. It's the teeth. <laughs> John Wolf and Cletus are going to Lisa Traffic. Can you imagine John Wolf and Cletus running around together? Yeah, but we still haven't figured out who Cletus is. He could well, the be. Last, the name of the show is The Last of Us. People, if you have not watched The Last of Us, I usually don't like these new modern shows because they suck. But that show is really, really good. The Last of Us. Uh, I was so sad. I, it sucked when I got done with the last one yesterday, which is one on tonight. Thank goodness. What a great show. And everybody dies except the two stars. <laughs> well, that's good for the star, you know, the show continuing. Well, it, you know, if you're going to have another season, you got to have somebody left. Oh, that yep. show's going to, yeah, that show's going to definitely have a big, I can see it definitely coming back next year. It's just so good. 
Uh, BK says, my friend told me it's a great show. It is a great show. And let me tell you something, guys. I don't like this modern shit. I'm telling you, if I say it's good, it's unusual because most modern stuff on TV sucks. Angel says, my son, I'm sorry, my son loves that show. Did I do a good angel? Okay. And uh, yeah, Angel, it's worth watching too. You really should watch it. I don't know. Well, well you know, uh, listen, we have, uh, this is the lowest amount of people I've ever had. See, when you start talking sports, Joey, they dive out, man. No, I bet you there's other people on right now. It doesn't, usually it doesn't matter. I don't think there's any, anybody else on right now. I think MR is on. It snapped up there. Oh, is, well, is he? I'm not sure. Let me help you guys out with your um, viewer count. I have to uh, get going, guys. Oh, now we're going to go up in point. Now we're going to go up. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to, you know, it's going to shoot right up. So I well, I've been on two hours. So I'm yeah, gonna... and I'm past my contract. I only said I would do two hours max. You don't want to pay me overtime, do you? That's time and a half. Yeah, I'm not going to. And, and so t once again, Joey, tell them where they can be tonight if they want to come to your show. The NB channel, 9 p.m., Floyd Mayweather versus Jose Luis Castillo won. We're going to find out who really won that fight. Sounds good. I will watch it. Okay. Take your care, name's Joey. Tony. I'm Joe, by the way. Nice meeting you, Joe. Lee, I'll see yeah. you. So Joe, you take care. Uh, Tony, you take care. I'm going to take off to myself, myself, people. Everybody take oh, care. Let me just say one other thing, Lee. Tony, if you're around, you just give the word. You could pop on anytime tonight if you're available. I will be there. I'll see you tonight. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Thank you, Lee. I'll take see you care. in a little bit, Lee. Yep. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me on. Bye. People, thank you so much for coming here today. I appreciate it. I had a good time. It was fun just to do a live every once in a while. I didn't realize I was going to do it so early, and I didn't realize I was going to plan it, set it out, no topic really. But I had a good time. Everybody take care, and I will, I got a great video I'm dropping tomorrow. Um, it's going to be uh, on a new rat, uh, a new informant that is in this. Uh, uh, they're bending over, kissing his ass all together already. So what I'm going to do is expose him for what he did. I'll be dropping a video on this gentleman tomorrow. It's going to be Sunday. Probably in the morning, I'll drop it. Everybody take care. Have a nice one. And please hit that like. Please hit the like before you jump out.